Welcome to the introduction to managerial finance video tutorials. In this section, we are going to cover the introduction to financial statements. As we have seen from our previous video, there are three financial statements that are important to most users. The income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. The income statement shows the financial performance of an organization, so how it did for a certain period, which is normally a year. And it's a result, it's either a profit or a loss. Do not be confused when you hear this statement referred to with other names like PL, earning statement, or statement of comprehensive income. It is essentially the same statement showing the same information. The balance sheet shows the financial position of an organization as at a specific date. So it gives a snapshot view, while the income statement gives a longer period view. The result of a balance sheet is that it shows you all the organization's assets and how they are financed. Sometimes it is called the statement of financial position. And then there's the cash flow statement. It shows us all the sources of cash and how that cash was used over a certain period. Its output is the ending cash balance of the organization. Although these three serve most of the needs of many users, it's worth noting that there are other components in a full set of financial statements that we will not discuss in this video. These are the statement of changes in equity, notes showing accounting policies and explanations of balances, restated balance sheet if there are changes in policies for comparability purposes, the director's and the auditor's report. This is a basic format of an income statement. It shows the period that it relates to. It is then divided into five sections. First, it shows how much income you generated from your sales. This is sometimes called revenue. Second, it deducts the cost of goods sold that we have sold. This then gives us the direct profit from selling our goods called the gross profit. Thirdly, we deduct all our operating expenses which are all other ex expenses except interest and tax. This gives us the profit from operations, sometimes called EBIT or earnings before interest and tax. Fourthly, we deduct the interest expense and add any interest income we may have. Finally, taxation for the year is deducted to give us our net profit for the year. The balance sheet indicates on top that it is for a specific date. It is then split into two sections, our assets and how they are financed, which is through either equity or liabilities. Both our assets and liabilities are then split between non-current and current. Non-current are all those assets or liabilities we expect to be around in more than 12 months time. Current represents all those assets or liabilities which will either change form within 12 months or not be in existence anymore. Our equity shows us how much our shareholders invested in the form of shares or capital plus all profits which have been retained in the organization. Remember, the total of the assets must be equal to the sum of the equity and liabilities. Finally, we have the cash flow statement. There are two methods of creating this statement. This is a simpler method which shows us cash generated by operations as all the cash we receive from customers less all the cash we paid to suppliers and employees. We then add interest received and deduct the interest we paid. Next, we add any dividends we received and deduct any that we paid out. And finally, we deduct the tax that we paid. This gives us the net cash flows from operating activities. If the amount is negative, it's a cash outflow. If the amount is positive, it's a cash inflow. For our cash flow from investing activities, we look only at cash used to purchase non-current assets like equipment as an outflow and any proceeds we receive from selling non-current assets as an inflow. This will give us the net cash flows from investing activities. 
Again, if the amount is negative, it's a cash outflow. If it is positive, it's a cash inflow. And then finally, our cash flow from financing activities. We then look at the cash received or used in equity. For example, the issue of more ordinary shares with increased equity, therefore a cash inflow. And movements in our long-term liabilities, whether it's an inflow when we borrow more money or an outflow when we pay back. The sum of these gives us the net cash flows from financing activities. We then add all the net cash flows from the different activities together and that will give us a net increase in cash if the amount is positive or a net decrease in cash if the amount is negative. To that we add the cash balance at the beginning of the year and thus we get the final figure and the result of the cash flow statement, the cash balance at the end of the year.